Welcome. This is Kevin Woodbury for Twin Suns Tutorials. Today I'm going to talk about exposure and depth of field. Now, depth of field is defined as that area before and after a subject of an image that's in sharp focus. So shallow depth of field means that the subject is sharp, but the foreground and background are blurred. Great or long or deep depth of field means that everything within the image is sharp and clean or crisp or in focus. Now, a number of things that affect depth of field are the aperture that you select. Um, F2.8 will give you shallow depth of field. F22 will give you deep or long depth of field. The lens that you use, a telephoto lens from 135 up, will give you shallow depth of field, at least as compared to a wide-angle lens. And the wide-angle lens tends to give you deep depth of field. The size of the image sensor, and the smaller the sensor, the harder it is to throw the background into blur. So that's something you need to know if you're buying a camera. And then um, how far you are from the subject and how far the subject is from the background, all of these work together to give you depth of field. And probably the greatest selection you can make when you're shooting an image is the lens and the aperture. Those are what will most likely affect what's in focus and what's not. Now the three controls on the camera that affect a well-exposed image are aperture, and aperture is the size of the lens opening, and it controls how much light enters the camera and hits the sensor. It also affects depth of field. The shutter speed, which dictates how long that light is allowed to hit the shutter, or the uh, sensor. And shutter speed will affect how motion will appear within an image, whether it be sharp or blurred. And ISO, which stands for International Standards Organization, basically ISO stands for the sensitivity of a sensor to incoming light. So you could say it differently. You could say ISO affects how sensitive that sensor will be to the light coming into the camera. So the three of these, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, work together to give you a well-exposed image. Aperture, and you can see that in the lower left hand uh, photograph, starts at f2.8, some go down as low as 1.4, and go all the way up to 22. And f2.8 is the widest uh, opening on a lens, f22 is the smallest. And some people ask, why is that? If 22 is the larger number, why is uh, 2.8 the largest opening? And the reason for it, or the better way to think about it, is if, if you consider these fractions, and technically they're not, but if you think of them in terms of fractions, 1 over 2.8 is a larger opening than 1 over 22. So that may be a trick that helps you uh, just remember 2.8 is the largest, 22 is the smallest. Now, 2.8 will give you shallow depth of field. It lets a lot of light in, that light becomes very dispersed, and therefore you're going to have shallow depth of field. F22, that beam of light coming in is very sharp and focused, and so you're going to have great depth of field. Again, keep in mind the lens has uh, something to do with this as well. Now, the pictures that you see in front of you now are just an example of showing you, if I use F2.8, I have a very sharp subject, which is the middle statue, and a very out-of-focus foreground and background. But as I move through the picture, going all the way up to F22, the background and the foreground uh, statues become more and more in focus until at F22, everything's sharp and focused. And I used a long lens on this. I used a 200 millimeter lens, which tends to have shallow depth of field. It tends to give me more control over the blurring of the background. Um, if I had used a wide-angle lens, I would have had much more difficult time getting the background to blur. Um, but I, I want you to note that as I go from 2.8 to 22, my shutter speed changes each time. And I do that because I have to keep those exposure values in balance, which we'll talk about in a minute. But in order to have the same exposure on each image, as I change the shutter speed, uh, the aperture, I have to change the shutter speed. Now the next slide is going to show you what we've already talked about, and that is that shutter speeds control the how motion will appear within an image, but it also controls how long light is allowed to hit the sensor.
at one quarter of a second you have a lot of light coming into an image so you can use small apertures at one one thousandth of a second you have very little light coming in so you have to open up the lens and use wide apertures such as 2.8 4 5.6 um, one thing to keep in mind with the shutter speed is if you want to blur an image um, that's in motion you want to use 1.4 or four, one quarter or greater if you want to freeze motion use one one thousandth now these images kind of sh display that if you look on the left side i'm using fast shutter speeds one one thousandth or more and each one of those pictures show frozen motion you actually can't sense the motion but you know it's there uh, but it freezes a moment in time if I look at the images on the right, I'm using a slow shutter speed, sometimes one quarter, sometimes less. Um, and look at the top where the, the uh, waterfalls are, and you'll see that the water is more silky and more foamy than had I shot it quickly um, with a shutter speed of about a thousand. I would have frozen that water, and you could see actual droplets at that point. But because I wanted the foamy effect, I used a long aperture. Now the two images below that are panned images, um, which means that as I'm shooting, I'm following the subject with my camera and I'm turning and shooting at the same time. And that achieves, if you do it well, a sharp subject with a blurred background. Now some people find the taxi to be distracting. I actually love that effect. Now ISO, again, is the sensitivity of the sensor to light. And the s smaller the number, the more light is needed to properly expose an image. The higher the number, the less light is needed to expose that image. But there are trade-offs. Um, at 100, I need a lot of light. It's considered a slow film speed or shutter speed. Well, it's not a shutter speed. It's film speed. Um, so I need a lot of bright light to expose an image at ISO 100. But the, the trade-off is that I get fine grain, which most times I don't even see, and I have a wide dynamic range, which is defined as the ability of a camera to record highlights and shadows with detail. So at 100, I have a wide dynamic range, but as I go up towards 24.6, I need very little light, but I get a lot of grain, sometimes distractingly so, and my dynamic range is very narrow, which means I'm not going to get a lot of shadow detail or highlight detail. It's hard to achieve both highlight and shadow detail with a very long ISO. So hopefully that's um, understandable for you. Now, this next matrix or table is meant to illustrate the relationship between aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. And it's an important concept. I'm going to use the rule of F16 as a starting place for that discussion. And the rule of F16, or sometimes called Sunny 16, says that if I set my ISO to 100, and I set my shutter speed to as close an equivalent as possible, 1 1 25th, and I set my aperture to 16, and it's a bright sunny day, I'm going to get a perfectly exposed image. Now that's a general rule of thumb. Um, that's great. But if I decide I don't want f16, I want f22, then I have to make a change to either my shutter speed or my ISO. And if you look at this second um, section down in blue, you'll see that the aperture changed to 22, which means I closed down my lens, letting less light in, which means I had to lengthen my shutter speed to offset that. So I had changed my aperture and gone one stop down, and therefore I have to change my shutter speed by one stop, which would give me 1 60th instead of 1 25th. Now I leave the ISO the same in this, in this example. If I want to change the ISO instead and leave my shutter speed at 1 1 25th, I can do that. So I'll, I'll change my aperture to 22, keep my shutter speed at the original 1 1 25th, and change my ISO to make it more sensitive to light again because I went from 16 to 22 I've decreased the amount of light coming into the camera therefore I have to either make the image sensor more sensitive which I've done by changing from 100 to 200 
whereas in the blue section I have to lengthen my shutter speed from 1 25th to 1 60th. I hope that's understandable. That's an important relationship. Um, if you have any questions, please email me at kmcw53 at yahoo.com. If this is not what the original folks who asked me for this intended, please let me know and I'll be glad to create something different and new. For Kevin Woodbury and Twin Sons Tutorials, have a great day.